What's up everyone? It's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, we're gonna cover the steps to get started on setting up your own business. So this is aimed at anyone who's you know, ready to start or thinking about starting. That's coming up next. All right, everyone, so the first thing obviously you need to do once you have your business idea is to come up with a business name. And we definitely recommend that the first thing you do is go check it out and see if it's available on the domain. And you have a really good website for that. Yeah, right. it's called Name Check. And I'll leave the, we'll leave the URL down below, but it's super easy. What it does is it checks the entire internet for the domain, such as .com, .net, uh, .gov, anything you want. So let's say you want to open up Backyard Sprouts 2.0 LLC, right? You'll type in Backyard Sprouts 2.0, and then you hit search and it'll tell you if that domain is available or not. So the last thing you want to do is put a lot of work and effort into a name that you fall in love with and then only realize later that it's not available after you filed everything, right? So definitely yeah. check your domain if it's available. Yeah, we went through a whole bunch of ideas prior to uh, incorporating because I think we found a whole bunch and then they were taken already. Right, basically. right. So, so that's that's important. Yeah, you're gonna have to get creative. And then once you find that the domain name's available, I would recommend going to the website on the state and you have to check to make sure a business hasn't already been incorporated in that name. So uh, North Carolina actually has like a search engine tool that you can go to. I assume most states probably have the same thing and double check to make sure that it's available there. But if it is, I'd recommend then going back and snagging those domain names uh, right away so you have them. Once you have figured out that your names are available, that's super exciting. Now it's time to make you official. So this is where I'm just gonna say your mileage may vary, right? Because depending on state to state, different states require you to do certain things to file and create a business. So this is something that is with North Carolina. So it might look similar or it might be completely different, but from us, once we figured out our name, all you have to do is go to the North Carolina Secretary of State website, and then you just search for articles of organization. And the articles of organization gives your business structure in the state, in the eyes of the state. And there's a cost to that, it is just $125. And once you file your articles of organization with the state for $125, that process can take anywhere between 24 to 72 hours for the approval. It just depends on how backed up they are. It's super easy. Once you get approved or denied, you'll receive an email stating if you're approved or denied. If you're denied, it will tell you why and what to fix. So for our example, I just wrote Backyard Sprouts and then submitted it. In the state of North Carolina, if you are incorporated as an LLC, and we'll go over the structure in a bit here, which one you wanna choose. But for us, we were an LLC. If you choose the LLC structure, it has to have LLC somewhere in the name. So I resubmitted it as Backyard Sprouts LLC, and then not even 24 hours later, we got approved. So once you get approved with your state, the next thing you wanna do is go and head on over to the IRS website and fill out an EIN number, which is also known as your employer identification number. And what that pretty much is, is it sounds scary, but it's pretty much uh, your social security number for your business. It gives it something for the IRS to track and of course tax. Other than that, once you complete that, that step takes anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes. And the moment you get to the end of that, it literally just gives you your EIN number. And from there, congratulations, you literally have a business. For us in North Carolina, it was a little easier for sure. You know, when, when people think about creating a business, it's it sounds daunting. But for us, you can do it within within two days. You, you, you think of a business name, you go ahead and file your articles of organization, and then you create an EIN number and you have a business. Again, that's just in the state of North Carolina, but you know, just things to keep in mind, right? So once you have your EIN number, then the next thing you want to do, and this is just something that we think is a good idea, especially if you check your domains are available, is just go ahead and create social media pages on all those domains, right? So if you saw that Facebook is open, go ahead and create uh, business.com on Facebook, go ahead and create it on Instagram, go ahead and create it on Twitter, just the at least the main three. So Backyard Sprouts has a Facebook and Instagram and a Twitter account, and that just prevents you know, for future, anyone claiming that, like, again, that's another thing that would upset you is if you spent so much time thinking about a business name 
and then you didn't create a Facebook or a social media and then later on find out that someone took that name. That would be a little frustrating. So just make mm -hmm. sure once you get your articles of organization and EIN, just snag the, the social medias. Even if you don't plan to use it, just create them and get that out of the way. That way no one can take that name. And then another thing that we really just wanted to mention because it's obviously relevant in our situation is if you're going to do this with a business partner, we highly recommend you guys put together an operating agreement. And ours is, you know, pretty simple. We, I think, just use like kind of a basic outline from one online we mm -hmm. found. And it goes over, you know, profit sharing, like profit split, uh, kind of expectations of each partner, what their roles are going to be. And also we built in, because it was not included, but thought it was important if one of us decides that we no longer want to be a part of the venture, that the other person has the right to like buy them out or just has the choice of what's going on with it so that you can't, you know, if you're putting like a trust together or something, you can't just leave your part to someone, right? This the, Your business partner gets choice. And obviously that's something you need to talk about with your partner, but we think it's very important to just establish those rules and boundaries up front. That way, when you, if you have an issue down the line, you already have it written out, you've signed the agreement and it's right there and uh, right in ink, you know what to do. Right. When you hear stories of nightmare businesses and business partners going wrong or things going, you just hear nightmare stories all the time, right? And that's partially because they didn't have everything laid out. It's very important when it, when you start venturing into business with either a friend, a coworker, someone, right? You have to lay everything down, whether you want to or not, whether you trust a person or not. It's just, it makes things easier from the start all the way to the end. Like Alex says, if it decides that it didn't work out and someone wants to leave or you have to split the business, it's all written out. There's no more confusion or there's no more, Hey, I thought we were going to do this. It, it, it takes all that out. And that's something super important when you are creating a business structure. You just want to make sure everyone's I's and T's are dotted and crossed. Yeah. So the last really fun thing that you guys are going to get to do is design your logo. RJ and I use Fiverr. Right. Any particular reason? Yeah. So this is something, again, right? When when you're new to creating a business, all of this starts to, starts to, you kind of learn as you go. And when you start doing generic Google searches, you'll see that logos can get pretty ridiculous. You'll see artists charging anywhere between hundreds <laughs> up to thousands of dollars for the logo. And again, as we are focusing on small businesses and people just starting up, you know, we don't like to assume people's financial situations, but you want to keep those costs low. And Alex and I are dropping hundreds of thousands of dollars on logos just wasn't feasible at the time until we knew we were bringing in revenue and stuff like that. So a good website for small entrepreneurs is Fiverr. And again, we'll leave a link to that website down below. And Fiverr, at, when you start looking through the website, does a whole bunch of things for everyone. So what it is, is it's pretty much a freelance website for anyone and anything so if you let's say i'm an artist i can go to fiverr and start promoting what i do so let's say rj does logos he does pamphlets he does little video clips for people and you can find anything on fiverr and so when we go on fiverr you'll see that there's a section for logos and it's cool because starting artists who haven't really gotten reviews or just starting yet is it's difficult for them to book people so what they do is they'll be on the low side so they'll say like we'll create a logo for you for five dollars or 25 dollars or anything like that and then once they start to build rapport i guess then you can get reviews yeah so after you're basically reading reviews that kind of allows you to go ahead and find someone who's maybe just starting off but has a lot of talent right at a cheaper price than you would for someone who's already established and has been doing this for years and has a number of clients in their portfolio which isn't a bad thing it just you know allows you to get some good talent at a cheaper price basically right i think we ended up spending was it like under a hundred dollars yeah. for our logo and and the artist just to give you guys a better understanding of how it works is you book a freelancer and right from the get-go they tell you what they'll do so if you book them and it's under a hundred dollars they will do something like you're up to unlimited revisions mm -hmm. some people do only up to three revisions right so they'll create a logo based on how you wanted it and if you don't like it then alex and i will submit what we want changed do we want the color change do we want it a circle do we want it a square and then he'll go out and do the revisions and then he'll resubmit it and then alex and i will review it and then if we like it then we can go ahead and approve it and he'll give us the files 
And if we want more revisions, then we just keep submitting it back to them until it's something that you're content with, right? Yeah. But once you have that file, congratulations, you pretty much got yourself a logo. That's the fun stuff. You know, once you once you've gotten all of the corporate legalities out of the way, like your article of organization, mm -hmm. your EIN number, then you can start really moving on to the fun stuff like the logos and if you want to create pamphlets and stuff like that, the social media pages. And once you have your logo, that's when it gets exciting because all the social media pages you created, congratulations, I can upload your logo and now you're pretty much legit. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. We also gonna include some of the links to stuff we discussed in this video in the description. Yep. And if you guys haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button below as it does help the YouTube algorithm promote our videos so that it finds other follow entrepreneurs like yourselves. And we will see you guys next time.